Hello and welcome to Meet the Candidates. I am Sharima Bauer, your host for today, and my guest is Eva Worthing, running for 9th Ward City Council seat for the November 7th elections. Eva Worthing, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to have you. And so, Ms. Worthing, we'd like to start with what qualifications do you have for the job of Ninth Ward City Council person? I have the determination and passion to ensure that my community is always taken care of. Mm -hmm. I also have integrity, and uh, I just really want to represent my constituents and do the best job possible to help my community. That's excellent. And what would that entail in terms of doing the best job? You know, I really plan on, because I'm a newbie, I've not been in politics before, I really do plan on focusing all my energy on learning as much as I can, um, even if it's from other city council members, meet, meetings, uh, learning policy, all of it. I really want to delve my whole being into doing the best job possible. I won't, I'm not taking this like lighthearted. It's not for an application or a resume. This is, this is me going all in to do what I can for Flint. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Thank you. Have you always had an interest? Yes. I okay. love politics. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad always talked about it growing up, and I didn't really get it until, uh, you know, I got a job. And politics affects your life. Uh, you know, health care affects your life. All of these policies that are made by politicians uh, affect us. And so there's not, there's no way that I can't not care. <laughs> like, I have to care. And I want to be that voice. I've always been a leader. I uh, taught for 13 years in the classroom. And so I feel like I can use my leadership skills and my passion to do something, to just really put it in action. Instead of just knowing how I feel, I want to do something. Excellent, excellent. So what two issues are most important to you citywide or in your ward, in the ninth ward, and why? Um, you know, the water is still a huge issue. Obviously, we all want uh, clean water for our constituents. Uh, but I also don't think enough has been done for those who have already been affected by the lead. Uh, you know, I just knocked on doors the other day, and in two homes, there was a lady that answered that was bald. She had lost all of her hair. Um, and then two doors down, a lady and her sons and daughter, they had rashes all over their skin, and um, hair was falling out. And that's now. That's today. So uh, I have been talking with a researcher who uh, has developed spirulina, uh, like supplements that will help combat the effects of lead. So for those that have already been affected, we need to help those more. I don't think they're getting the help that they need. They're still being affected. So, yes. And so that would be the, uh, my main concern as well as police. The city council uh, voted to decrease the police presence uh, in the budget. And for me, two hour wait times when calling uh, 911 is unacceptable. Again, I'm a single mom of two, and if I called 911 and it took police two hours, I would lose my mind. So uh, it's super important to me to work within the budget and uh, with any uh, grants or funding that we may receive to get the police out there and to do their job. Yes, and those are two very, very important issues. My top two, yes. Yes, facing the city and in specific specifically to your ward as well. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely the city wide, obviously, with the water crisis. Yes. And I hadn't heard so much about the water uh, in my ward, but as I got out, I realized that certain neighborhoods are affected more, and it's the older homes with the pipes that were older yes. that uh, determines whether you're, you can take a bath, really. And, uh, and so no one's drinking it, but it's difficult. If you have five kids... Hauling in bottled water for all five of your kids is like, that's impossible. So uh, we, we need to fix that, that like as soon as possible. It's been too long. Absolutely. Then I would ask you, how will you contribute to the effectiveness of the city council? You know, uh, I think we lack some professionalism in the city council meetings. Uh, a lot of people feel it's just a circus and they don't represent Flint as well as they could. Not everyone on council, but I plan on being professional and uh, following Robert's rules of order and hopefully 
when we get this new council in, that we can all work together. I've already talked to other candidates, and we have this unified goal. We're in it to help others. We're not in it to make ourselves look good or bigger. Uh, I'm sure we'll disagree. <laughs> we'll always disagree. But we can do that in a professional manner with, without doing it in front of, you know, um, the people there at the meetings. We can um, disagree but do it in a professional manner. So I, I plan on uh, doing what's best for the city no matter what. And uh, also, I, I want my constituents to know more. Like, living in the Ninth Ward, uh, I didn't know when crime watch meetings were or when the ward meetings were. Uh, and not everyone has the time to investigate that. So I plan on using social media um, a lot more effectively to let everyone know what's going on. And then uh, even monthly coffee hours to meet up with anyone who has concerns. Uh, obviously answering phone calls to my constituents uh, and just doing what uh, I was elected to do, which is to help them. Yeah, that's excellent. That's excellent. Thank you. In terms of helping them, what sort of solutions would you pursue to address the water affordability challenges facing our city? That's a tough one because even right now, city council, I, I agree with them not uh, doing anything on the water. Uh, they've withheld the GLIWA contract for the 30 years because they don't have enough information. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe any of us have enough information to make the right decision. And so I definitely agree with council on that. Like, we have to stay with GLIWA right now. The, there's no way we can operate our own plant. So we have to stay with them. But a 30-year contract, that's not in our best interest either. Mm -hmm. So affordability ability would hopefully be in the future us having our own plant operational. It's not going to happen now. It's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. um, but if we can take control of our water, uh, then we are going to save money in the long run and mm -hmm. instead of having to pay, you know, the Gliwa in Detroit. That's a really great point you're making, and it actually uh, segues into my okay. next question. So we can maybe expand on what you just said a little bit. Um, do you have an alternative water sourcing option that you lean towards? You mentioned the water plant. Yeah, you know, it's like I said, it's really hard to make a decision when you don't have all the facts. Uh, I do like the thought of we're going to own our own water source. We will have our own plant. We can manage it, and hopefully we can make the right decisions and not have someone take over again and make these decisions for us, uh, and, and we will feel that our water is safe. But we don't have the people in right now. Uh, we don't have the resources in order for that to happen yet. So it's got to be Gliwa right now. It has to be until we can get it together. But 30-year contract, they're trying to force us into that, and to me that's extremely unfair to say that, hey, we poisoned you, um, and, and we did this without elected officials involved. Uh, and, and so now you have to make a decision before you have all the facts. And they still don't have all the facts. None of us do. And so to me, it's, it's still, it, it's a travesty. It's still mm -hmm. taking our decision and our voice out by not having all of the facts and, and control. Do not force us to make a decision uh, without knowing what is you know, what will happen. Yeah. So um, I say no to 30 years, but okay. until we can figure out more, and then we're going to have to get Flint operational. We definitely need to attract, you know, those who are qualified and can do the job. And so it, when we attract more businesses here, and, and I plan to do that in the Ninth Ward, then we attract qualified people who want to live here. Yes. Uh, so hopefully, you know, that will get sorted out, but it's going to take some time. It is. And you mentioned that you would like to attract jobs to the Ninth Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have some ideas about that? Yeah, you know, um, it's great because as I was coming in here to the studio, I see the artists out there. They're mm -hmm. putting up a mural. Yeah. And that's what makes Flint great. Yeah. Like, it's the Agreed. individualism, and I think we need to yeah. emphasize more the arts. Mm -hmm. And so when we bring people in here, like my son, he loves parkour. If we bring in uh, par parkour classes, that helps our economy and it helps our spirit, community spirit. And that in turn attracts even more businesses. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we need to focus on our talent that we have here mm -hmm. and really play up Flint as a place to be. 
and people want to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So does that mean um, talking you know, to organizations and to corporations even? Yes. To bring them to Flint and specifically uh, into the Ninth Ward? Yes. Uh, you know, Ninth Ward is mostly residential. There's not as many businesses. So I would love for, like, I want to do urban farming to help mm -hmm. the um, children with the effects of lead. Yeah. If they grow their own food and it's uh, super food, it's not, you know, there's no GMOs. They've done it themselves. Right. Okay. Um, if, if we can get organizations that will help us out with that, and mm -hmm. hopefully the school could be a part of that as well. Um, but if we can attract those organizations uh, then how much better would it be, you know, for the community and the kids um, to be involved in schools, you know, just kind of going off of that. Schools are super important to me as an educator. They are our future. Yeah. And I feel like they kind of get <laughs> ignored. The budget, they don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's too many kids in the classroom. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like we need to do better there as well. So I plan on doing grants um, contacting organizations uh, and and helping them come here to Flint, making it as easy as possible uh, to come because we need our children involved and we need more people in the community involved. I need I want a sense of community and pride, and you know the Flint water crisis has just it's devastated people. They've you know the trust is not there, so uh, we need to build that up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And building up the trust is, it is very, very important. Um, the solutions in terms of moving forward, you know, and I think you're also talking about speaking to that divisiveness, and when mm -hmm. we come back after the break, we'll maybe talk about this a little bit more as well. Um, and, and you've kind of spoken to this already, you know, uh, we need to have, you know, more professionalism, yes. as, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there is that level of divisiveness. Um, you know, what do you think about that, you know, within the city leadership or between city leaders and the public? A lot of city council want to be mayor, or they just want their own agenda. So I think that's where the divisiveness comes from. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that the new city charter will help with that. Um, and also, I have no plans to be mayor. <laughs> like, okay. And I am not backed by okay. anyone. I am just, I funded my own com campaign. I don't want to owe one person a dime. And I don't want to feel obligated. I am really here just to help my community. Okay. And that's what politics is to me. Mm -hmm. All of these um people pouring in money to candidates and they're all fighting to get that job. I really just want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've talked to several other candidates in other wards that mm -hmm. are exactly the same way. They just want to make a difference. And if we can get those type of people in, the divisiveness, it, it's not a competition. Mm -hmm. Then we're there to have a unified goal, you know? Yeah. And we will be right back. Welcome back. 
I am your host today on Meet the Candidates, and my guest today is Miss Eva Worthing, and she is running for Ninth Ward City Council for the November 7th elections. Now, in Miss Worthing, we have, again, to continue our conversation, what is your position on PA 436, the emergency manager law? I absolutely believe that that's a ridiculous law. Um, it was forced upon us, and uh, whenever you take away the democratic process and the voice of the people, uh, it never bodes well. And uh, the proof is that we were poisoned, and we had no voice or say in that. And the people aren't happy. You know, um, Flint has had its problems. You know, we, we've we not gotten it together in a long time. And I can understand where some people might think having someone come in and take over would be a good idea. But when, when you have someone that's looking at dollar signs, and it was really just like, what, a dollar a day or so uh, for the chemical that would have prevented all of this from happening, um, instead of the people, then then you just you lose the personal touch and disaster happens and so this is why I'm running is because I feel like I'm in the community I care about my community I care about my kids I want the best for everyone and I don't want to go to the door and see someone with their hair falling out you know I want to see healthy happy citizens and uh, the emergency manager isn't invested in us, you know, uh, and and we need to make our own decisions. Yeah, yeah. and you know, and of course, with the emergency manager having been, um, you know, you know, taken away as of basically of 2013. However, RTAP, mm -hmm. the you know the transition advisory board, uh, is is here. And you know, what do you think of of RTAP? We're still, it's still like we don't have full control, yeah. and. I still think we need to be given full control. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason, I mean, they're telling us that we can't, that we have to make a decision in a certain amount of time mm -hmm. on the water. And I think mm -hmm. they need to step back and say, hey, we made a huge mistake, and we're going to let you do what you were elected to do. So I still don't think it's a good idea. Um, you know, it's one thing to give advice and to help, but to force mm -hmm. and have your hand in it um, and, and take over the elected officials. You know, we still vote, whether it's a good or bad decision, we still vote and we should have confidence in that vote that the person that we uh, wanted to get in and voted to get in is the one making the decisions. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned that you're a school teacher. Yes. All right. And Well, uh, former, because I, okay. I quit last March, so. Okay. All right. And um, you mentioned also that you know one remedy for you know uh, for fruits and vegetables, um, mm -hmm. you know, getting the lead out of out of children's bodies, uh, would be you know, urban farming, yes. and urban gardening. What are some other ways that you think could alleviate or mitigate the effects of stress and trauma uh, in our children? You know, I think that um, that we should be providing transportation okay. and. Uh, and free doctor's visits. I know that we have uh, more Medicaid available for our citizens. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're getting, what about the people who are disabled and can't even get to the doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to make sure that each and every citizen that was poisoned uh, is taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that people outside of Flint understand that this is not, this is not just old news. It's old news to them. This is we're still dealing with this and it's not go gonna go away and this will be a lifetime especially for the children that were affected by this crisis um, this is a lifetime of we need special services for them in school because maybe their brain development was affected uh, that they need nutrition you know so WIC is important for all uh, Medicaid more uh, food stamps and we need to make sure everyone's getting taken care of and, and that milk and all of those things help combat the effects of that. And so we're doing some things and I'm very thankful for that, but I don't think we're doing enough, especially with those with rashes and everything. Um, it's kind of like, oh, they have a rash, but it affects, you know, if you're a child going to school, if you're teased or it, it could even physically hurt, and I, I don't think we've done enough to make sure they're taken care of in that way. Mm, 
Absolutely. And in your door knocking, you've been able to, or in your going around yes. about the city council, um, the, the ninth ward, have you been able to talk to parents? Uh, what are some of parents' ideas that you've that you've heard? Well, I mean, I just have heard about the dermatologist that they haven't been able to go, and it may not be covered. Uh, and mm -hmm. honestly, I don't think anyone's approached them. You know, uh, a lot of times we don't know what to do for our kids unless we're told. And it's just like when the water um, team comes around and gives us free water, uh, gives us a flyer about what you can do for shower filter and water filter. We need someone walking around saying, if you've been affected, if you have rashes, if your hair's fallen out, um, here's what you can do. Uh, call this number. And I don't think that information has been available to them, so they're not really sure what they should do. Um, and that's where I want to come in, and I want to make it widely known. Uh, this is how we're going to help you, and this is what um, you can do. And that urban farming is part of that. The doctor, all of that, we, we need to do better. Yeah. Now, how is blight uh, in the Ninth Ward? A lot of our urban farms have started. Gardening has mm -hmm. started because houses were raised. Um, they were, you know, they, they were abandoned. Um, what is blight like in the Ninth Ward? You know, my area is okay, but there are certain patches where there are abandoned homes, mm -hmm. and um, it's a problem for some. So I'm all for trying to get that taken care of as far as uh, if it's damaged and it cannot be repaired, then we need to take care of it. Um, or fixing it up in order to be able to sell. Blight affects the home values, and uh, it's definitely something that shouldn't be ignored. And unfortunately, right now, with everything going on, we have all these, we have the water, uh, you know, police, and blight. We have a lot. So I really plan on working within our budget to try to do the best I can with all of those issues. Um, those are the top issues in Flint. And uh, I mean, home values, you know, you pay so much for your home and then to find out it's worth like a quarter of what you paid, yeah. you know, because a lot of people said, well, well, if the water was bad, for the sake of my children, I'd just move. Um, how can you move when you've invested in there and you'll get nothing back? You have nothing. So um, it, it's important that we get that taken care of so that residents, if they want to move, they can. Um, and they also feel that they have security in their uh, home for future choices. So, and and we want crime to go down because blight encourages crime. So it's better for the economy to take care of blight and it's better crime-wise as well. In terms of crime, um, another thing, I wonder, uh, what do you think of proposals that have been about turning Flint into a dry city? Where, whereas, um, you know, alcohol is only sold at bars and restaurants. I, you know, I, I don't think it's ever a good idea to restrict. It almost seems like when you restrict, it makes people want to do something more. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, I'm from the South in Kentucky. Um, my dad is, and he came up here to actually work for GM. Okay. And the county that he was born is still a dry county. Uh, they just go to the next county, and the next county gets the money for the liquor and the sales, and then they bring it in. So economically, it's actually not a good idea, mm -hmm. and it's not going to change anyone's habits. Um, we have, I, I think, you know, with the water crisis, uh, home prices, all of it, depression is a huge thing, um, and anxiety <laughs> for these people. I mean, just walking door to door and seeing that, I could see the anxiety on their faces, I think we need to concentrate more on a community spirit and lifting spirits and letting them letting them know that we care instead of trying to control things that we can't really control. Yeah, that's understandable. Well, thank you. And so we have just a few minutes left. And so to close, if you would like to look into the camera and talk to the audience directly about why you are the best candidate for the Ninth Ward City Council. Hi, I'm Eva Worthing, and I am a former school teacher of uh, 13 years. I quit to focus more on my campaign, and um, even though I'm new into the political field, uh, know that I'm a single mom of two who cares a lot about the future of my children. Uh, I love my neighbors, I love my neighborhood, uh, and I am a leader. I will get things done. I owe 
Uh, I don't owe anyone anything. I have went in this doing it all on my own, knocked on the doors myself, uh, paid for my flyers, paid for my signs, and, um, and it's because I care. Uh, and just know that I will not let you down. Uh, I have a, a strong voice and I will not back down. I will definitely do everything that I can uh, to make our community, our ward, the best that it can be. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Worthing, for being here today. Thank you so much for having me again. It's well, been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. It's been very nice. And that is it for today on Meet the Candidates. I have been your host, Sharima Bauer, and we'll be back soon with more interviews from mayoral and city council candidates for the upcoming November 7th elections. See you then. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. WFOV, Saturdays from 3 until 6, it's me, Dr. Lee Bell, inside the Jazz Jacuzzi. Come on in, the music's just fine. Join me. You've messed up your son's haircut. Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, babe. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. They say you don't have to be so strong. But this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then. So I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Look who's here. Yeah. Heard about the scarecrow who won an award? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> Una nueva madre aprende a patinar y con una pierna rota. No tienes que ser perfecto para ser un padre perfecto. Miles de hermanos que esperan ser adoptados te aceptarán tal como eres. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. is no less than any other family. My heart doesn't, My heart doesn't see race. race. Even love, love is love. love.